Embiid never had anything handed to him, and despite insurmountable odds and devastating tragedy, the process withstood it all and was able to prove everyone wrong. I actually don't know how many people know this, but right after I got drafted back in 2014, I thought about walking away from the game. I'm not exaggerating at all. Joel Embiid Becoming an all-star in basketball's biggest league was never in the pipeline for Joel Embiid. There's no golden ticket when you're a young athlete in Yaoundé, Cameroon. You see, basketball is not exactly a national pastime. Soccer is Cameroon's number one game, with volleyball not too far behind. So with Embiid's monstrous size advantage over his peers, spiking his way to the top as a volleyball star seemed a natural choice. The process was determined to make it to the national team. But at 15 years of age, Embiid found himself fascinated with a different ball, an orange one. And with that, Joel discovered a terrific template. The Nigerian-born superstar, Hakim the Dream Olajuwon, the future 76er modeled his game after the all-time great. He started dream-shaking and making a name for himself. But Joel's father had other ideas. He thought the hoop game could put his son's volleyball career in danger. One ankle injury and all would be ruined. Thomas Embiid was a strict military officer who wouldn't budge, so the process kept his basketball skills a secret. Until a former NBA player and a fellow native of Yaoundé uncovered the treasure that is Joel Embiid. During a basketball camp in 2011, Embiid caught the eye of Luke Bamute. Luke was playing for the Milwaukee Bucks at the time, and he had never seen skills quite like that of the young Cameroonian, even though Embiid had only been playing for six months. I knew guys who had been in the NBA for years who couldn't do that, Luke Mabute. The Buck star knew this kid was something special, and so he made an offer to the colonel. Joel's father agreed to let his son follow the journey of a basketball giant. And so, Embiid headed to the Sunshine State, Montverde Academy High School in Gainesville, Florida, the perfect place for a young athlete to work on his game. But Embiid was about to become a stranger in a strange land. I was a little afraid. The only English I knew was, good morning, Joel Embiid. But who needs English when you've got the amazing talents of a future MVP candidate? Except the process was, well, still in the process. And his fellow ballers weren't too kind to the African arrival. They were making fun of me all the time. I couldn't catch the ball. Coach Boyle would stand back and tell them, you laugh now, but in five years, you're going to go to Joel to borrow money because he's going to be rich. Joel Embiid. The humiliation and heartbreak didn't get Joel down. And before long, the kid that couldn't catch a ball was a high-ranking prospect. It landed him in the very college that produced perhaps the most dominant big man to ever step on the hardwood, Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain. At the University of Kansas, Joel improved at a frightening rate, and he declared for the NBA draft. On June 26, 2014, Embiid was selected as the third overall pick, and a remarkable journey to the grandest stage in basketball was complete. Except, tragedy was about to strike and threatened to destroy everything Embiid had worked for. Before Joel Embiid could make his much-anticipated NBA debut, the behemoth baller was ruled out by a terrible injury. Surgery was required, so just as Joel's little brother headed over to the United States to visit him, Embiid had to take a rain check and go under the knife. We talked about what it was going to be like when I got healthy and he could come back to America and see me play in the league against Kobe, against Steph, against KD, Joel Embiid. In a cruel twist of fate, Arthur Embiid would never come back to America and would never see his hero play in the NBA. In late 2014, Arthur was tragically killed in a car accident. He was just 13 years old and Joel Embiid's heart was broken. He contemplated retirement. But despite the catastrophe, a fire still burned in the process for the game of basketball. Embiid refused to be defined by tragedy, and that orange ball he fell in love with, he picked that back up. Embiid is now a four-time All-Star, one of the NBA's finest talents, and a Cameroonian king in the city of brotherly love. So remember that with determination, perseverance, and a little trust in the process, you can always bounce back. <laughs>